Good morning, party people. My name is Cameron. Welcome back to the bar with an X. Everything was broken on Wednesday, but we're picking back up where we last left off. Sort of, kind of. We're actually going to go back through everything that we were supposed to cover on Wednesday. Uh, we'll do a little bit of a quick run through of the hooktail cocktail, because uh, we did that already. We did some techniques and stuff for it. Uh, we got to the point where we were able to create the... It was the... Oh my goodness, I forgot what the word is. What is it called? Tasty tonic, that's what it is. Uh, but we never got to Bobbery, and we never got to Smirk, so we're gonna do all that today. We'll do a bit of a review. I don't wanna waste anybody's time, so we're gonna hop right into it. The Hooktail cocktails we discussed the other day was inspired by a grasshopper cocktail, but because Hooktail is a bit of afraid of uh, cricket sounds, and that's kind of her secret weakness, uh, this one is, uh, it's, it's based on the grasshopper, that's, that's why it's called that. Uh, but it's got a little twist on it. It's gonna be a little more cinnamony. Use a cinnamon fireball whiskey. It's gonna use a bit of Angostura bitters. It's gonna spice things up a little bit. Make it kind of like a spicy grasshopper. Um, and honestly, it's a great drink to have if you're uh, experiencing a Saturday morning like now, because it's nice and creamy, it's got a good texture to it, and uh, it kind of reminds me of like a, like a coffee latte in the morning, so I guess it's more of a, a foamer, because it's not really, it's not, it's not, it doesn't have any coffee in it. It's got Keiko though. And in any case, we'll start off with that first. First, what we're gonna, going to need, you're going to need some sort of shaking apparatus. We're gonna have some ice in there at some point. I'll get some ice. Uh, the ice is actually fully frozen today because it wasn't put in the fridge literally the day before, which, uh, you know, it's not, it's not really anyone's fault here. It's not a place for fault or anything like that. Um, I usually grab a big cube, and then I grab a little cube, but that's just the t tends to be the way that I do things. Uh, people have different methods. Um, I don't know what the other methods are out there. I usually put my solids into the big container. I put my liquids into the small container so that I can pour liquids into solids and then proceed from there. So let's get to it. For your hooktail cocktail, you're gonna need a few ingredients. You're gonna need some creme de kinko. You need some creme de menthe. You're gonna use some cinnamon whiskey if you have it. In my case, it's Fireball. Don't let the raspberry container fool you. It is not raspberry jam. It is cinnamon Fireball whiskey. I see Annie Poppy and saying, good morning, good morning to you, Annie. This wake up cocktails for everybody. Uh, and we need some Angostura bitters and some heavy cream. I'm gonna go into my refrigerator for the heavy cream. Um, I'm hoping that that it's Saturday, that the ingredients that I prepared for Wednesday are not totally, totally ruined. But if it is, well, the show must go on. It still sounds pretty gushy, so I think we're gonna be just fine. And he says, guess it's true. It's five o'clock somewhere. It is five o'clock somewhere. Alexa, where in the world is it five o'clock PM right now? Like? All right, Alexa, stop. No, just, just stop. And it's okay, I, could, I couldn't figure it out. The, the machine couldn't help us with that one. So to create your hooktail cocktail, first we're gonna add to our shaker tin a full ounce or about 30 milliliters of creme de keiko. Grab one of my measuring majiggers over here. I said 30 milliliters, right? I'm glad, I'm hoping I did. First time I'm saying it's 1.33 a.m. with my little Aussie buddy. Am I to assume, my little Aussie buddy, that you are over in Australia, hence the Aussie? I also appreciate your little bit there. What we do for bits is we do a little, we got a little party box over here for things like that. I appreciate that. Let's hope, does this one make sound? <laughs> Hell yeah, it does. Celebration times, come on. Yes, I'm from Australia. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. I have been told by the internet so that's the big caveat there, that Australia is a terrifying place. I don't really believe the internet. They tend to bastardize a lot of pieces of truth. Next, we're gonna add half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of creme de menthe. That's the mint proportion of this grasshopper cricket dragon looking thing. I'm actually seeming to run a little low on my creme de menthe, but um, this is a Haram Walker. I've been told specifically to get better liqueurs and Haram Walker is not necessarily the better one in this case, but this is how it is. Next, we're gonna add a quarter of an ounce or about seven milliliters of your cinnamon whiskey. Fireball is what I'm using. Um, it's the same bottle of Fireball that I've been slowly but surely sipping off of since my early college career. Um, there are some people, there are some people out there who have definitely sipped from this bottle of, of Fireball. And, uh, and some people who haven't. But we need a, just a quarter of an ounce of that. Does the quarter of an ounce. This one doesn't have any de- this, uh, this measuring majigger does not have any demarcations for a quarter of an ounce on it, so I'm kind of just like, 
doing what I can. Then we're gonna need a quarter of an ounce of Angostura bitters. Take the Angostura bitters cap, remove it, take off the thing on the inside and only slightly stain your hands, if you're skilled at that, which I am not. So mine's a big stain. And pour a quarter of an ounce of that into your cocktail as well. There we go. See, Annie's saying, if I had to guess, it's five o'clock somewhere in the ocean where nobody lives. Or this is too hard of a math question for my recently awoken brain. Both can be true. So technically, so let's let's break down some math, right? Five o'clock is about seven hours from now. So if there is some place that is seven hours ahead, or I guess seven minus 24, which is 17 hours behind, it would be five o'clock there. It would be five o'clock. All right, so we've added our Ango, our cinnamon, our mint, our Keiko. Now we need two full ounces of heavy cream. Um, I got Bowling Basket. I bought it from Giant. I think that's great. My little Aussie buddy says, Australia has top ten, the top 10 most deadliest animals in the world. That also includes snakes, spiders, birds, and insects. The birds, the emus. I'm a, I would say I'm a large fan of emus, but I've never actually met one in person. So maybe I'm a fan only from afar. Add two ounces of cream. That's about 59 milliliters for those across the pond. I'm actually curious, my little Aussie buddy. Do you all use the metric system? I've never had the opportunity to ask somebody from Australia. I swear that's the last time that I'm going to specifically call you out for Australia-based comments. Otherwise, <laughs> I might be here all day because I got plenty of, plenty of questions. Disney Queen says, Greece is seven hours ahead, making that 5 p.m. ish. All right, you <laughs> Exactly, where'd that little thing go? That's for emus and the war. Not just the first war, but also the second one. All right, cream's in there. Pop that into the bucket. We have our cream, we got our cake, we got our mint, we got our cinnamon, we got our angostura, which is technically also cinnamon, but a bunch of other botanical herbs and spices and stuff as well. We're gonna add our liquids into solids. My solids have not diluted so much, but we try to get that excess water out of there. There really wasn't much. Liquids into solids. Give it a spack. Spack. And then, uh, let me just go for it. I like to shake these ones a little bit more than other ones because of the, the cream in this. Now that we've got that shaken, we're gonna need a chilled coupe glass. If you had one prepared, great. If not, that's okay. Mine's chilled. Bring the cocktail angle over. Here we go. Gotta move things a little bit. And we've got a special garnish for this guy as well. Anybody who tuned in on Wednesday, you already know what it is. But for those who are hopping in a little bit new, here we go. Here's a little cocktail coupe. Let's uh, detach. There we go. Grab a strainer. Grab a strainer, strainer, strainer. And then pop that over into our coupe glass. It's gonna have a slightly red, almost pinkish color to it because of that Angostura. And if you shake it real good, it'll have a nice creamy top to it. A creamy top that is perfect for a garnish like what we're gonna try this time. And I think it might actually come out better than last time. Let's see, let's see. Next we have a little hooktail stencil that was made via the assistance of um, the assistance of a cricket machine. And we need some grated cinnamon, which I also got from Giant. So let's pop that on there and see if I do better than I did the other day. I was shaking with like a really aggressive angle the last time, and I think I want to be a little more over top instead of being so aggressive with it. I'll see if that comes out a little bit better. All right, the reveal. Honestly? I'm happy with that. That looks really good. I love that. Athens, Greece, 5 p.m. We have a winner, truly our queen, says Annie. And my little Aussie buddy says, metric is kg and meters, yes? Yes, or is that imperial? Metric and meters is in me metric, woo. Meters? Meters, yeah, meters for metric. Yeah, you're right about that. So you do use metric. I think it's the superior system, but then again, I was formally trained uh, for engineering purposes. And once upon a time, somebody didn't agree upon imperial and metric and people died in a spaceship crash. Isn't that crazy? Can't we all just be, can't we all just like, agree? No. But in any case,
This is our Hooptail cocktail. As I gave some notes on Wednesday, this is a very cream forward cocktail with notes of mint and with slight notes of, of cocoa to it. There is also a component to it that is a bit cinnamony and honestly a little bit spicy too, but it's very, very light. Cinnamon whiskey, this fireball that I have, if you can even really call it whiskey, does have a pretty potent flavor to it. So that's why we only add a little just to make it so that we get that hint of cinnamon because we really don't want any more than that. I at least don't want any more than that. So that's what we use. So how does this hotel cocktail taste? I did already mention it already, but we'll go through it again. And this might be just what I sip on for the morning because it just feels appropriate. So far, it looks like the stream is running okay. I did figure out what the issue was, and I can go into that as I do a little bit of cleanup. Hmm. Oh man, that kind of that kind of set me straight for the day. That's great. I think I I hoofed it a little bit, and uh, pieces of cinnamon have now gone across the top of the glass. <laughs> oh, which is great. It's it's delightful. It is. A lovely mix of, honestly, that mint component and that cinnamon component, they, more the drier cinnamon from the garnish up on top, meld really well together. Um, if you're not careful and you don't properly hydrate, you'll get the, you'll inadvertently cinnamon challenge yourself, uh, which is not what I would encourage for literally anybody in the world, ever. But that's good. So that's cocktail number one. Cocktail number one, we usually take a lot more time on this stuff, but I did cover that on Wednesday. Today's coaster... Knox Whiskey Works. They make uh, the two gins that Luigi is caressing over behind me. A gin aged in Cabernet Sauvignon barrels and a gin aged in bourbon barrels. Both very, very tasty. Do some cleanup. I see another bits out there from the our little Aussie buddy. Is it gluten free? Oh, let's see, I missed the other comments. Imperials, feet, and miles. Metric is grams, kg, meters, and km. To my knowledge, is my little Aussie buddy. Uh, America and one other country, Djibouti. And there's a t there's a second one too, and I don't remember the other one. USA's colonies also use it. What if you rim the glass with cinnamon? Is this a gluten-free cocktail? Ooh, I have literally no idea. I wouldn't assume that there's gluten in any of this, but I wouldn't assume that it's not gluten. Now, technically, Angostura's recipe is proprietary, so, and I don't think I see anywhere on it that says gluten-free. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I certainly wouldn't assume it. If you're celiac, I wouldn't assume it. Did you know that vodkas are gluten-free? Supposedly? My mother, uh, my mother is a bit celiac, or at least a, a bit gluten-sensitive. And uh, she was like, Cameron, Cameron, look, it's gluten-free vodka. And I was like, I was like, oh. A lot of, a lot of base spirits are gluten-free because the distillation process just kind of rips the gluten out of it. I'm a little less sure for grain-based spirits. But I think for the most part, gluten has to have, the, the, the gluten molecule has to like, I'm not a bread maker, so I wouldn't exactly know, but I think it has to like, it's a, it's a, it's a webbed molecule structure. So when you build the gluten on top of each other, it creates this web structure that provides structure for like breads and stuff. Um, but if you don't allow it to like flip and combine and other stuff, I don't think you, I, I don't know whether that creates a reaction or not. That's a question for the scientists. You rim the glass with cinnamon. Oh, I did read that comment and I completely missed it. Vodka's potato and most rums are 100% gluten free. Actually, so just a quick fact, vodka can be made from pretty much anything. Uh, potato vodkas are very prominent. My favorite potato vodka, I don't actually have it on me, uh, but it's uh, Skunk Town from a place in New Jersey here in the US of A uh, uh, called uh, Flemington. And they make a very good potato vodka. But that can be made from pretty much anything. Google says Angostura is gluten free according to the Amazon. All right, so, so far, so far, I feel like we're good. Maybe. I would ask you to try it, but naturally, I'm the only one who gets to try cocktails over here because I'm here and you're uh, over there. Anyways, so that was our hooktail cocktail. And we'll move on quickly from there. The other cocktail that we kind of got a chance to take a look at on Wednesday was the Tasty Tonic. The Tasty Tonic in the game is kind of a I wouldn't call it a cure-all per se. It exists in both the original Paper Mario game as well as Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. And in the original Paper Mario game, you can create with a number of different ingredients, whether that be apples, lemons, limes, bubbleberries, coconuts, red berries, blueberries, blueberries, um, or yellow berries. So the idea behind that was if we were gonna take the tasty tonic and put it into real life, how would we do that? Well, we'd take some gin, because it seems like a gin and tonic to me, and put a bunch of stuff into that gin. And if you put strawberries, our nondescript red berry, blueberries, our nondescript blueberry, starfruit, our nondescript yellow berry, 
lemons, limes, coconut flakes, apple slices, all into this gin. It'll turn this beautiful red color and have a very, very, very fruity and honestly very sweet taste to it. In addition to that, you might need to add the bubbleberry aspect, in which case we have some bubblegum vodka that is from a while ago. We made this a while ago. You basically take pink bubblegum and you put it in vodka, and as soon as the bubblegum has lost its color, you know that you've got what you need there. And of course we have tonic water. So this is a, this is a gin and tonic, but a very, very free gin and tonic. I see, ooh, my little Aussie buddy popping in with a follow. Thank you so much and welcome to the bar. And lovely Dawn donating $15 to the World Central Kitchen for so far $669.69 on the Twitch side of things. So for those who are popping a little bit later to the party, we are still, because we're not at the end of the year yet, raising money for the World Central Kitchen. With that $15 donation, we're now up to a total of $515.69. Thank you, Lively Dawn. And as we do for donations around here, we pop balloons for charity, so. This one is for you. Thank you so much, Lively Dawn. But that's a very good rule of thumb there, my little Aussie buddy, that anything distilled is probably gluten-free. I would be surprised if there's anything out there that is distilled that isn't gluten-free, and being that I feel like it is a possibility and this is the wonderful world that we live in, somebody's gotta let me know what it might be. Nah, lovely. Dawn. Shadow. With the $15 for the World Central Kitchen. For those who don't know about the World Central Kitchen, they provide meals to people and families all around the world in need, usually experiencing various different types of crises, whether that be humanitarian, weather related, or otherwise. So the every dollar counts, at least according to the little Twitch description that appears up in chat over there. Awesome, awesome. Charity's still going. Bubblegum vodka gummy bears sound delicious. I can try that. That's a really good idea, Annie. No problem, love to catch you, see you online. Hope you're doing well, thank you, thank you. You as well, Lively Dawn. Things have been a little crazy. We're planning a wedding around here, so things are wild and few and far in between. When they add the flavors. When they add the flavors is when the things become a little less gluten-free. So let's real quickly go through and make a little tasty tonic. Essentially, this is all built in a glass of your choosing. I'm actually feeling a little frisky, so I'm gonna do, I don't think I've used this glass on stream before. It's a very big triangle looking thing and I think it's cool. So we're gonna use that one. I'm gonna grab ourselves some ice cubes, some smaller ones, because I don't think the big ones are actually going to fit this way. And we're just gonna fill up the glass with ice and see how far we get with it. Let's do one, let's do two, let's do three. I'm guessing four. It looks like we can do a fifth. So we're gonna look fine. And we build everything inside. Ooh, and I forgot to mention that, in addition to all the other ingredients that I mentioned already, you can combine honey syrup with this as well, because that is also a component in the games that you can use for cooking items. And in the original, you have to mix the honey syrup with your red berry, blue berry, your yellow berry to, cre to actually create the tasty tonic. So that's all that goes into this. Ooh, excuse me. I'm gonna get a little bit of water over here. <laughs> I'm working on fumes, fumes over here. Jam jars, are great. jam jars are very, very good for storage purposes. Annie says, did you make a custom couples cocktail for your wedding? I did. It's a strawberry Negroni. It's not custom, super duper custom, um, but uh, I, really like, I really like short like gin cocktails like a Negroni, and Annie really likes strawberry stuff, so that's what we did. We kind of put the two and two together. Very, very simple stuff. Thank you. Greetings from Emma. I'm a doing what? And I have a for the both of y'all. All right, tasty tonic time. Let us go for it. What we're going to do for our tasty tonic, let me pop a cocktail and go over here so everybody can actually see what's going on with this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful creation. Um, the lighting is actually very helpful here in the morning. It's 10 o'clock p.m. over here. T 10 o'clock p.m. No, a.m. It's it's a.m. We do usually do not do this stuff in the a.m. Um, usually not how things go over here. Is that okay looking? Give you a little bit of a tilt. Push you back. Just to, wait, I don't need to push it back. I don't need to push it back. I can just pull it this way. There we go. Still working on angling stuff around here. All right, let's go for it. One and a half ounces, or about 44 milliliters, of your fruit-infused gin. You can actually get it open, which in this case, I was able to do so. I've almost run out of measuring the jiggers, but we actually got some more. 
over the holiday season. So, let's unpack a new jigger and use that one. One and a half ounces, 44 milliliters of your gin. So let's go almost to the top of my two ounce section. There we go. Pop that inside. Great. Next, we're going to add a quarter of an ounce of the bubblegum vodka. The bubblegum vodka is very, very intense on the bubblegum flavor, so you really don't need that much of it. It also provides a lot of the sweetness, which is further amplified by the flavors of the honey from the honey syrup. This, this, the thing's ring on this jigger is completely knocked off. They're, they're cheap things. I just need more of them. Quarter of an ounce of bubblegum vodka. Don't need too much of it. Beautiful pink color. Beautiful pink color indeed. I'm a simple person who would settle with an old fashioned. Old fashions are great. I love, uh, actually, so uh, let me ask this. I would say I love old fashioned, but I don't love all old fashions. How do you do your old fashions? For me, I like simple syrup in my old fashioned. I'm not a fan of the muddled fruit, not a fan of the muddled sugar cubes. I like simple syrup for my sweetness. That's my source of sweetness. It's just more controllable. I think it's better done that way, in my opinion, but to each their own. And then we're going to add to our tasty tonic a half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of honey syrup. So, honey syrup. My honey syrup here is a one to one ratio of honey and water. Put that over some heat until the honey is completely dissolved and that's your honey syrup. You could also do a two to one ratio to keep it shelf stable for a bit longer. If you want to do math on that, you're more than welcome to do so. And after you're done measuring your ingredients, you can top that off with tonic water because this is basically just a sweetened gin and tonic. Top it all off. There's gonna be a little mixing that happens because of this pour of the tonic water, but I'm gonna grab my measuring spoon because there's actually a, a really fun bit of layering that's happening down here. I'm not sure if you can tell from your angle, but it's kind of green at the bottom. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool indeed. Let me, get, let me grab a spoon and agitate it just a tad. Just a tad. This is not one. This is not stable. Wow. Sometimes the glass matters. Evidently, it do. I'd use a swizzle stick, but I don't think that I'd be able to fit my swizzle stick in here. Actually, I don't even have a swizzle stick. What am I talking about? I can, I shouldn't lie to you. And he says my favorite old fashioned is the one Taylor mentions in her song, but unfortunately, I can't stand the actual cocktail. Maybe you just need some more simple syrup. That's what I would do. All right, and finally for our tasty tonic, in the game it's garnished with an orange flower. And I tried, I tried to follow this Pinterest thing that I found, where you take pineapples and you put them in a dehydrator or your oven and put some Cabernet or some red cranberry syrup on it to make it look like a flower. I don't know if it really worked. It's been a couple days. These are very, very disgusting looking pineapple things. Uh, but I'm gonna use it anyway because I'm fine, I promise. Basically, just take your pineapples and dehydrate them uh, and just be just be careful with it. We're, we're all about experimentation around here. If it doesn't work out completely, that is okay. But that is our tasty tonic. Tasty tonic indeed. There we go. I'll put the pineapples away. Let me put these away. These, are, these, these things scare me. Eat these quickly. <laughs> or just don't eat them at all. Recycle them. Uh, not, not recycle. What do, you, what do you do with things like that? You compost them. That's what you do. You compost. And he's saying, I would pay $10 for this. It is just beautiful. Thank you so much, Annie. It is of my own creation, so I will take, will happily take the credit for its creation. I think it looks very nice, too. And now I'm going to add a straw to it, because I don't really want to sip it otherwise. Let me grab Pink Straw from my Heroes of Barcadia game. All right. So far, how's the stream going so far? Nothing is breaking. YouTube is still up. We're not encoding overloaded. Yes, it's great. Not the pineapple. Oh, not the pineapple. Right behind the pineapple. And how does this thing taste? Well, that needs some more agitation. That needs more agitation. So my straw is there all the way at the bottom. So I'm getting a huge blast of tonic and honey syrup, which is honestly not so bad, but it's not the flavor profile that I really appreciate, to be honest. I want a little bit more of that bubblegum flavor, so I'm gonna kind of sip from the from the top a little bit. This is not the best glass for this. I'm admitting to that now. Yeah. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's good. It is refreshing. It is biting. It is fruity. It to me, it's hard to piece out all of the different fruit components that exist within this particular tasty fruit gin infused tonic recipe. It looks very purple. It looks looks very pink. So I'm inclined to have my mind wander into the direction of strawberry flavors, and there is a bit of a tartness there. And Aside from the lemons and limes that go there, I didn't actually put any lemon or lime juice in here. I took the actual flesh of the lemons and the limes and sat that into the gin. So it shouldn't be too forward on those very acidic, citrusy notes, but it should only support the other more prominent notes around it. The strawberries were cut very, very thin, and that's very prominent here. The blueberries were actually kind of sweet, so I don't think that's coming from that. And there's just a very slight tropical note to it that you could be like, is there like a little bit of coconut in there? It is, and to me, that coconut flavor is on the very, very back of my tongue, not the rest of my mouth. The roof of my mouth is kinda, it's kinda candy-like. It's very bubble gummy. The back of my mouth is the coconut, very slight coconutiness there, and a bit of those honey components too. It's actually very warm, despite being a very cold drink. And I appreciate that, very much so. It's honestly a bit, it, you could probably make this less sweet if you added less honey syrup, but I don't think that you should take out the honey syrup completely because that honey note is complementary to the fruit notes of the gin and a little bit of that bubblegum too. It's honestly kind of surprising. And of course, tonic. So there's a bitter component there and I think the sweetness properly balances out the bitterness. And I am very much appreciative of it. And I think that came out pretty good. Pretty good indeed. Aussie Buddy says, one teaspoon of brown sugar and a dash of bitters, then burn in a shot glass for five seconds. Mix into two shots, if middle or top that shelf whiskey, not a rub. Garnish with a sprinkle of sea salt, not ionized table salt. Two shots, not one. I like that idea, the brown sugar with the bitters on top and then you burn that. That's another, that's a very good one. I feel like there's a video that I've seen around the interwebs a number of times where I think they call it the ring of fire old fashioned, where I believe they did the same thing. I could be wrong on that, where they doused the sugar cube in the Angostura, let that burn and caramelize for a little while, and then add everything on top of it. That's a very, I haven't actually tried it that way, but I have had burnt sugar cube bitters infused, burnt, burnt, getting my words mixed up. Bitters soaked melted sugar in stuff before, but don't ask me the last time I tried it because it was a hot minute ago, and I think I burnt it, like really, really badly burnt it. It didn't even caramelize, and so I was like, oh, this is terrible. Um, I've since burnt at least seven simple syrups since then, so I'd say that maybe I've learned my lesson. Rum! Rum! Not rub! Oh, excuse me there, the rum. Oh, the rum too! Oh! Two shots of middle or top shelf whiskey. Not rum, not rum, not rum, specifically. Otherwise it'd be like a rum old fashion. I, I want to say I appreciate you for sharing your recipe there. If anybody else wants the... Feel, please, this is a place for... Sharing recipes and stuff. We'll go for that. So that is our tasty tonic. It is very, very citrus forward now that I think about it. Citrus forward in terms of the acidity. It's uh, it's getting my, it's getting myself all up in wooed, wooed indeed. And old fashioned has no rum, unless it's a rum old fashioned. Old fashioned is more like a, it's a formula. So you can add different base spirits and stuff to it and you still have your old fashioned, which is your bitters, your little bit of sweetness and your spirit. Um, and it comes in a variety of different old-fashions. The rum old-fashioned, or a whiskey old-fashioned, or a bourbon old-fashioned, the rye old-fashioned, the traditional old-fashioned. People say you have to use, oh no, no, it's for the Manhattan, you have to use the rye one. But to each their own. This coaster is from Thirsty Dust. That's a place right up the road. Where did I put this little cocktail over here? Hello there, Ice Snow Wolf Cold. You should make a coconut strawberry milkshake. Do I have any coconuts? I have coconut shakes. I don't have any strawberries left. Oh, goodness. I don't have any strawberries left, unfortunately. And I, I, I have some strawberry stuff, though. Ooh, another bit from the from the little Aussie baby. I, I, I keep forgetting where I put this thing. <laughs> all bourbon is whiskey, but not all whiskey is bourbon. That's true. Bourbon's got to be American. There's a bunch of laws associated with it. There's aging requirements. There's mash bill requirements. Exactly what those are, I can't quite articulate there. But can confirm. It is absolutely true. An old-fashioned version of the coconut strawberry milkshake would be a very interesting idea. I like that. Okay, where are we at now? 
We've done two cocktails so far, and technically we're now caught up to the horrific technical difficulty stream that was Wednesday. We've covered a hooktail cocktail, which is a riff on the grasshopper because of hooktail's fear of cricket sounds. It's like a, oh, it's like a grasshopper, but it's a little bit more cinnamony, and it's got some Angostura bitters in there for color and for a bit of flavor as well, and it's garnished very heavily with some cinnamon to make it look like hooktail's face, as beautiful as she is. We also moved on to a modified gin and tonic with a very, very fruit-infused and sugar modified gin uh, with some notes of bubble gum, with some notes of fruit, with the very good tonic water and some honey syrup, which has changed at least three times because when I made the syrup, I think I used three different types of honey through along the process. So it's a very, it's a, it's a, it's called a proprietary honey blend honey syrup one to one ratio as we usually do, or two to one. It really depends on how frisky we're feeling. Those two other cocktails that I have left prepared, we're about at the half hour mark. So I think we're properly proceeding through at a bit of an expedited pace Let's take a breath for a moment, because we usually try to savor these things a little bit more. We have so much wedding planning stuff to do today, so I am working on a little bit of a schedule. I apologize for that. After the January month, things should be a lot more smooth around here. I'm very behind on a lot of things in terms of the Instagram posts and the blog posts and everything else in the matter. It's... Woo! Just have to know what station, what uh, what stage you are at in your life uh, and what, what things you are currently focusing on. It's a whole... I won't get into that. Let's get let's get to more drinking. I see Ice Snow saying, can you tell me about the grasshopper drink you said? I need details about it. So the grasshopper drink is originally a cream, mint, and cocoa or chocolate flavored cocktail. The recipe that I vibe with the most is a part a two to one to one ratio of heavy cream, creme de menthe, which is a mint liqueur, and creme de cacao, which is a chocolatey liqueur. Two ounces of the heavy cream for me, or 59 milliliters, to one ounce or 30 milliliters each of the creme de menthe and the creme de cacao. It's minty, it's a little chocolatey, and it's got a wonderful silky creamy texture to it. And if you serve it cold and drink it quickly, it's a very enjoyable experience. If you let it sit for a little while, it's cream, it sits out, it gets a little weird, but some people are totally into that. My little Aussie buddy says, Reynolds Gin Fizz! Oh my goodness, with the gin, the lemon juice, the lime juice, the heavy cream, the orange blossom water from fresh egg white soda water on top. Reynolds Gin Fizzes are cool. Because if you shake it really, really well and you add that soda water in just the right way, the foam rises out of the glass, seemingly defying gravity. We've made, we've made one or I think we made one on stream a while ago during the Fizzes and Flips stream, and there might have been another one later on. Horn of the Bowls is kind of a tequila-based uh, gin fizz. It's a very it's a very fun one. We love you, Cam. Please don't stress. We can wait for X-Bar stuff until after the wedding. <sighs> Your words bring the stress off my shoulders just a little bit. <sighs> I can breathe a little bit easier. Thank you, Annie. Okay, let's move on to another cocktail. So there's two others. Spot one more inspired by a boss from Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door, and one more inspired by a partner character from Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. Uh, if you guys want to give me a direction of which one to do first, you let me know. I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup out of there, uh, around here, um, but if hearing none, I have a decision already made. I'll do a little bit of cleanup, which actually doesn't really involve that much. I just kind of need to put things back in the fridge and stuff. Boss or partner? That doesn't go in the freezer. That goes in my refrigerator. <laughs> a little sip of water. Ooh, that tasty tonic looks really, really good at that angle. Wow, I love it. Bartenders hate the Ramos Gin Fizz. No, they hate the people who order the Ramos Gin Fizz because they're the real enemies here. Do a poll? I could do a poll. You're right, I could totally do a poll. Let's see. Poly poll poll. Nope. This one, manage poll. Oh wow, this is really, create a new poll. Oh wow, this is really confusing. No, it's not. Ah, here we go. Question. Next. Cocktail. Uh, partner character. Bobbery. Oh, I've run out of space on that one. I don't usually do polls, that's a great idea. Uh, boss monster. Let's do that. Allow additional votes? Sure, why not? We'll do it for a minute. Yeah, we'll do it for a minute. Let's do it! Very cool. I don't think I've ever... So I just recently put all of my settings and all of my docs and stuff into OBS. So I can do it straight from here. It's not as difficult as it was previously. Let's see how that goes. In any case, if nobody contributes, that's fine. I got an idea. No pressure. You can just sit back and relax. That's the only thing that you really have to do. Mm -hmm. 
Ba -da -ba. Oh! I'm losing my balance a little bit. Just a little bit. I voted, though, so it's working. Oh, great. Unfortunately, it doesn't work for the people on the YouTube side of things. There's just a lot of... I haven't quite figured out a way, because there's a bunch of commands and stuff that work in the Twitch side of things, because the chat bot that I have can monitor Twitch chat, but it can't monitor the YouTube chat, which is... I haven't quite figured that out yet. I'm all in for technical details, and eventually we'll get that stuff smoothed out. But for now, I think Twitch reigns supreme. And we're almost out of time in that poll thing there. Next cocktail poll has ended. What does it say? View the results. I see it's opening up in another tab. Why is it doing that? Hello. It says boss monster. We're doing the boss monster. Okie dokie. That's what we'll do first. Can I exit out of that and it goes, to, oh, I completely closed it out. Probably because it's run through a Twitch based UI. That does make sense. I lost my dock. Come back. Where'd my quick actions go? There we go. I gotta put that back in OBS. I don't know what happened to it. There we go. Okay, okay. Everything's fixed out now. Let's do the boss monster. I I had another plan, but all right, we'll do the boss monster. So, the boss monster that we have planned is a boss called Smorg. I love the Smorg theme. So let's pop that on for a second in terms of the music. We really get ourselves into the vibe of what we're trying to do around here. So Smorg is a really odd creature from Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. And I was trying to do a bit of research to inspire this cocktail. And I will be perfectly honest, I had a really, really hard time coming up with the Smorg's cocktail. Wait, I missed it. What did you vote on? Boss Monster, we're doing Smorg, dear. You can literally hear me from downstairs. Like, why are these questions up? So essentially what happens in Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door around chapter six is you board the Excess Express, a train that takes you from Roadport all the way to Poshley Heights, where in the Poshley Sanctum, you are to find the next crystal star in your adventure. When you get onto the train, things are a little weird. There's a note that says that there's somebody gonna hurt you in a big sticky explosion, which you later find out, spoiler alert, to be Dupless and the Shadow Sirens playing more tricks on Mario to prevent him from getting to the crystal stars. And at some point in your journey, you run into this big monster that's a conglomeration of tiny little, tiny little like, like cloudy black and pink creatures that when combined together, create this mass monster with tendrils that can grab passengers and seemingly engulf them whole. Um, there is absolutely no inclination anywhere aside from at the very end of the chapter of where this smorg thing is coming from so it seemingly comes out of nowhere i think that when you stop at a sort of almost abandoned kind of train station in between the road port and possibly uh possibly sank possibly heights uh that the smorg was maybe hiding in those little like dusty rustic areas over there so the what i worked on for this particular cocktail was something that was weird but something that almost had an air of like fanciness to it. And when I think of like fanciness, I think of like these pretentious assholes who hold their parti martinis in their hair, uh, martinis in their hair, like in their hair like this. And they're like, I love a nice gin martini. Do you love a nice gin martini? Vodka's for the posh. Just funny because posh, poshly, it's a little bit the opposite of the very rich area that it is. Um, but to the people who have their martinis on their head, I say, enjoy your cocktail. Seriously though. So this is a bit of a riff on a gin martini but something a little bit weird. And there's a whole journey for how this thing came to be. So please sit back, relax, strap yourself in and get comfortable because this train ride, choo choo. That was weird. Anyway, let's, conti <laughs> let's continue with that. That was the only weird part? That was the only weird part? This is the only weird part, really. Oh, okay. So the base of a gin martini, or just martinis in general, it's a gin martini, a classic gin martini, at least from my taste, is you have some proportion of gin to some per, uh, proportion of dry vermouth. For me, I tend to find things a little more gin forward to be more my particular speed. So for me, a five to one ratio, oddly enough, of gin to dry vermouth sits very, very well for me. That's about two and a half ounces or about 75-ish milliliters to a half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of your dry vermouth, the first ingredient being your gin. People tend to use a London dry gin, but really you could use any gin that you want to. It's those junipery notes that complement well with the dry vermouth, oddly enough. Um, so I snow saying that was good. Thank you very much. But so I was thinking of other weird martinis. And a weird martini to me is a Gibson martini, which adds basically whatever martini base that you want, but you add a cocktail onion garnish to it. And if you want to get spicy with it, you add a bit of 
cocktail onion brine to it that adds a savory, salty component to the cocktail as well. And if you add just enough of it, I think it tastes really, really, really good. But I'm the guy who eats uh, uh, raisin bagels with cream cheese and vinegar capers on top of them in the morning. So that might just be my particular taste palette. And so I was like, okay, well, how do you make it even more weird? How do you take it back to the game? So I thought instead of using a, what was it? Instead of using a, um, instead of using cocktail onion brine, we'll make our own brine, something else that is vinegar based. So I decided to take red cabbage and put it into vinegar. And I came up with this strange looking container of orange, not orange, pink stuff. Pink stuff indeed. Are you taking us to a weird place in Super Mario World? Weird, you say? I hope it's not too haunted. No, we're not them in the creepy steeple. It's Poshley Heights. I'm taking you to weird places, though, it seems. We can get weirder. Want to play, do that thing with the voice vocal cords? Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, I also try to do voice acting stuff. So this is the part where we do voice acting stuff going forward, starting now. Well, it seems, now that we've gotten to the point where we have this odd orange liquid, orange, it's not orange, it's pink. I don't know why I keep getting confused. I thought red cabbage, because red cabbage, the begin, the middle part of smorg has a bit of a pinkness to it. The rest of the tendrils are kind of like a navy bluish, blackish color, which is kind of odd. So originally, I had imagined a martini glass, such as this one, with the pink liquid inside of it, with these sort of black tendrils all around the outside to sort of mimic the creature in the game with like pipe cleaners. I actually have the pipe cleaners over here. Wait, where the pipe cleaners? I honestly, I did not have enough time, so I haven't done the garnish up yet. But the idea would be to have this pink cocktail looking thing with the tendrils out the other side to make it look like the smorg. And to be perfectly honest, I didn't have the time to do that. I had so many more plans, but again, I'm just gonna use wedding planning as a means to uh, save myself from that. So I wasn't really able to do that. Also, when you take red cabbage vinegar that has been adjusted by boiling Granny Smith apples into it, and you combine that with everything else, it tastes terrible. It tastes really, really, really bad. <laughs> I didn't like it. I was trying so hard to adjust the ratios and stuff, but it really didn't work out. Um, so after the stream ended on Wednesday, I went back and I completely reworked it. And uh, I went into a number of my different books in order to do that. So let's move this martini glass off to the side and try not to break things. Book number one is this flavor matrix thing. Book number two is this wild drinks and cocktails book. Don't fall over, please. And the other one's this drunken botanist. I went straight to the library with this one, my own personal library. Oh, I'm getting up here. A friend mixed five world hottest gummy bears into a Galliano White. That's incredible. Cheers to that. <laughs> That's horrifying. Top tier Halloween drink though. I'm gonna get the, my voice is getting tired. I apologize. Thank you for that. That was actually, that was actually perfect. The, um, so when I actually put out the photos and stuff of this later and I'll update the cocktail blog with the final images and everything like that, I'm hoping to make it look really, really cool. Uh, I just didn't have enough time to prepare for this particular stream, but the recipe did get to where I wanted it to be. So let's do that. Okay, so after combining basically red cabbage, apple vinegar, and gin and dry vermouth, and trying very, very hard to make that work, I took a step back for a little bit and I tried to go into this book about flavor matrixy stuff. It basically gives you flavor pairings. And through that journey, I was able to find, let me go to my notes, kind of catalog the whole journey. Um, that I really wanted to do something with vinegar. And actually, it wasn't this book first. I went to the Wild Drinks and Cocktails book, where in it, it details recipes for a drink called Switchel, which uses, um, it uses vinegar combined with some honey and other things. Let me find the actual page. It was 60 something. 60 something for Switchels. Switchel, Switchel, Switchel. Oxymels and Switchels. Switchel, Switchel, Switchel. To create Switchel, Classic Switchel, you take molasses, apple cider vinegar, fresh ginger, and water and put it together. And that's how you would make a classic, classic Switchel. It's vinegar, ginger, and sweet, sweet dark molasses, preferably black strap molasses. And you combine that together and it actually tasted pretty darn good. So what we did afterwards was take this vinegar, put it to the side, and we combined it with some black strap molasses and some water to bring down the flavor a little bit. And instead of being that pink color that it was previously, it took on the color of this black goo. So we took pink liquid, 
and made it into this dark black liquid, which I assure you tastes a lot better than the other one. And because we're all about the aspect of exploration, I'll just straight up tell you what they both taste like because... And Granny Smith apple vinegar tastes like versus Smorg Switchel, two ounce Granny Smith red cabbage vinegar, two ounces of blackstrap molasses and filled with water. It's called the Smorg, the Smorchel. The smor the Smorchel. Okay, we've got two of my little sippy glasses. Let's see how these two things actually taste. Oh my god. It is a it is a potent, potent thing. I made this originally with just distilled white vinegar. And as I was reading through the book, it was specifically saying, don't use white vinegar. So I messed up from the very beginning, but that's the whole idea of mixology, to play around with things and see what, see what works. Very terrifying. One shot and he hasn't touched it since. Real vinegar or just expired wine? Oh, a real vinegar. Well, vinegar that I bought from the store, you could also make expired wine. The alcohol turns into acetic acid. It becomes um, vinegar. That's vinegar literally translates to like, I think expired wine or something like that in the original. Ooh. If the wine goes bad, it goes undrinkable. Well, ba the bad is not necessarily such a black and white area. Things can go bad, but they can also go bad in a, in a good kind of way, if you know what I mean there. That's why I make little Abe test it, not me. Or you can make me test it. I do weird shit, to be perfectly honest. So, our red cabbage vinegar, that was also boiled with Granny Smith apples, and then squeezed out of a cheesecloth bag, smells like vinegar, but it's a little sweeter than vinegar. It has a nice, like, savory smell to it, almost like boiled apple. Or not boiled apple, baked apples. Um, okay, if anybody out there was ever told that you should drink apple cider vinegar for like acne and stuff, this is what it tastes like. Um, it's honestly not the worst vinegar I've tasted, because I have tasted more vinegars in the past. It's tart, it's sour, but that's how apples kind of taste to me anyway. So it's actually not, it's not, as far as vinegars go, it's palatable, but not super palatable. I just like the fact that it looks red because you take red cabbage, you put it into the vinegar, vinegar is acidic, it's a pH indicator, it turns this really awesome color, um, but alas, no. It wasn't working in the cocktail, unless you added like just a couple drops to it. It can basically function like saline solution, unless you water it down, in which case you could do more stuff with it, but I was too silly to know, so I just didn't do that. On the other side, the Switchel has, in, in addition to this, an equal part of Blackstrap Molasses, and the brand that I use, is plantation blackstrap unsulfured molasses and then you fill the rest up with water this is a two cup container in this two cup container is two ounces or 59 milliliters of our red cabbage granny smith vinegar and two ounces or about 59 milliliters or 80 something grams i believe of blackstrap molasses the volumes and stuff get a little confusing there and you just fill it up the rest with water and this smells like molasses, like watered down molasses. It doesn't really smell like vinegar at all. And it tastes... Like a sweetish, sweetish, not sweet, sweetish, tart, almost like, it's a little metallic too. So I would say overall, it's a very me like metal earthy kind of taste to it with a touch of sweetness and a touch of tartness, which translates a lot better into where we're going. It definitely tastes like it could be a little bit medicinal, and evidently, at least according to the history of the Switchel, people used to like down this stuff. Like, especially during like prohibition time where like you're not really supposed to have alcohol and stuff. Um, because technically speaking, this is not really alcoholic. Welcome to the party, CSMR Tags. We have a bar, we have a, a drink for you, and it happens to be based on vinegar, so I hope you're into that kind of stuff because this is what we have provided for you at the moment. Um, but because there's no actual alcohol in this Switchel, um, you can drink it all day long. And I guess feel good about yourself or just feel terrible about yourself or feel good about the work you're doing or good about yourself while doing the work that you don't like doing. Uh, it really depends on your perspective, but that is Switchel and this is vinegar. Instead of using vinegar in the cocktail, we use some Switchel in the cocktail. That's what we're gonna do. Consumption, take a sip of the drink again. Why? Mm. I did the vinegar, I did the vinegar. 
I did the vinegar. It was all for you. I did the thing. Oh my goodness gracious. This is really intense. All right, I'm gonna put this away. I don't need that anymore. Oh my goodness. This better cure my damn acne. Cause if it doesn't, I don't know what I'm gonna do really. On back says Amy Chow, what are we doing? Switchel? Nice. What's the capacity of the jar? Two cups, two cups. Looks like you enjoyed that. Insofar as pleasure can also be pain, I very much enjoyed that. Smart cocktail. So after going through more or less a very interesting evolution of what the heck this cocktail is supposed to be, I settled upon something a little bit different. So now I figured it's not gonna be a Martini Gibson type thing. Instead, it's going to be more a Switchel cocktail inspired by taking some roots from a Martini. So it's definitely still gonna have gin in it, but instead of dry vermouth, we're gonna add the Switchel instead because it's got that vinegary component for the for the record, sweet vermouth, dry vermouth, they are both from wines as a base. They are aromatized wines and as opposed to other types of wines. If you if wine goes bad in one way, it can become vinegar. If you let wine sit in other botanicals and stuff, you can create vermouth out of it, which is aromatized. You add other herbs and spices and stuff to it, but you can also fortify wine as well by adding more alcohol to it or doing other stuff to it, preservatives as well. You create things like sherry or port or Madeira, which are all at the wine base, but are a little more similar to the vinegar aspect of wine than other aspects, depending on what you kind of use. So I tried to keep within that vein ever so slightly. Eat it, consumption. I can do the switch on this time. That's easy. So I went into my book, which is our flavor matrix book, and I was looking around for things that go well with molasses or sugar syrups. And I need to go to the right page of it. Um, but actually, I just know what it is off the top of my head. So what goes well with sugar syrups or molasses components, things that are very, very caramel forward are spirits such as Madeira or Sherry, which are two different types of fortified wine. So I thought, what if instead of using a dry vermouth as the sort of wine answer to our martini, and although we have some vinegar in here, how about we add a little bit of that wine back? And I tried to use this Madeira wine that I've had in my collection for actually quite a while now, but it hasn't gotten a lot of use because I honestly don't know what to do with it. But I gave it a try and it kind of worked okay. The nun conjuring Valek has just well come to the bar. Your drink is Madeira. It's arguably better than the Switchel, but that's because this is made professionally and this was made by some idiot trying to do things at his home bar in Philadelphia. And I don't know who that is, but um, you can blame him for that. I seem a little Aussie saying, I seen and touched a hundred year old bottle of wine worth $5,000. Oh my goodness, this consumption wasn't worth the party heads. Oh, sad. But that's really cool. What kind of wine was that? If you want to share, that'd be great. What do we have here? Drinks? Hmm, weird looking. Yes, very much so. You're not the first person to realize that around here. So we have Madeira wine. Madeira wine is separate than sherry or port wines, mostly because of the region. There's other stuff that goes into it too. But the, histor the history of Madeira is actually on the back of this bottle of Rare Wine Company Historic Series Madeira New York Miles Me Special Reserve Wine produced and bottled by Vinhos Barbido Madeira LDA Camara de Lobos Portugal Pros Produce of the Island of Madeira Portugal. It's from Portugal, the island of Madeira in Portugal. I took a wine class once. So this is just a reminder of where we've been. The historic Madeira series. In the 18th and 19th centuries, Madeira was the United States' most prestigious wine. Oh my goodness. Shipped to connoisseurs and major seaports from New Orleans to Boston, the historic Madeira series is the creation of the Rare Wine Company, America's leading merchant of rare old Madeiras, working with Vinhos Barbido, which possesses one of the great libraries of legendary 19th century Madeiras. Each wine in the series represents a style of Madeira popular in an early American series. New York Malmsey, that's this type, celebrates the rich, luscious Malmseys that at affluent New York was prized from the colonial period until after the Civil War. It is superb after dinner with dessert or on its own or mixed with vinegar, <laughs> like the, like the, like the uh, behemoth, behemoth blasphemous assholes that we know ourselves to be. Incredible. My favorite wine is the Moscato from a Napa vineyard. Over, oh, ooh, I had it once on my visit there. I miss it every day. Napa, that's California, right? I like California. They got, they got things over there. So back to the, back to s'more. There's just, there's a lot of stuff that goes into s'more. This was a really, this was probably one of the most 
difficult cocktail creations that I've done yet. And mostly because I haven't, to be fair, I haven't done that much of them, but I really, really wanted this one to work. So we tried for it. Consumption, let's try some Madeira. This stuff is so good. This is very, very good. Thank you, Ice Snow. Imbibe, imbibe we shall. Cheers. Oh, it's so good. Oh. Madeira to me is so, it's got such an interesting sweetness to it. It is like drinking maple syrup, but it's a little more tart than that. If you imagine like what, where this Madeira sits in my mind is at a crossroads between the vanilla flavors of whiskey or bourbon, the like molasses flavors of rum, the like acetic tartness of vinegar, and oh, there was another thing. What else did I literally just say? Oh, and it's like the syrupy, sugary aspects of like maple syrup, and that it's a little, it's got a little bit of a flory, flor, flory, earthy, whatever you call them, component to it. It's lovely. And I had been wanting for a long time to figure out what to do with this Madeira. So, without without like sitting on this for any longer, let's make a s'more cocktail, which uses London Dry Gin, some Madeira wine, and some Switchel that you may have created in your basement, or maybe bought from the store, or a friend of yours. We're, we're all about reusing things in the, every way that we could. Is maple syrup made from honey? No, maple syrup actually comes straight from the maple tree. It's actually, they poke holes in the tree and it seeps out over long periods of time. They collect it, put it in jars and stuff, and then they do stuff with it. And he says, have you heard of the maple tree? Have you heard of the maple tree? <laughs> that seems so sarcastic, I'm sorry. So let's make a smorg cocktail, which is a bit of a martini thing. Martini thing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a stirring apparatus and add a big old ice cube to it. Just because, just for funsies, I'm gonna take this D20 ice cube that deformed because it sat in the freezer for a while. Um, actually, what am I saying? I'm not gonna do that to myself. I want a proper, I want a proper cube. I'm gonna get a proper cube. That thing is so deformed. I have a D20 ice cube maker. It's not really an ice cube. It's more like an ice icosahedron. Is that another bitty? Do you drink wine, my friend? Sometimes. I'm more of a cocktail drinker. I'm more of a spirits and cocktail drinker more so than wine. I am much less experienced in the wine world than anything else. Um, liquor's good. Liquor very good. But in any case, so we have a big old ice cube in here. We're gonna add two full ounces or about 59 milliliters of gin. I need, I need another, I need another measuring jigger. They're new. I'm getting some use out of these Christmas gifts. Two full ounces, about 59 milliliters, to our stirring apparatus. Uh, actually, before I get into this, let's pop the cocktail angle over so we can watch this drink transform before our very eyes. Come over here, buddy. Let's get you all nice up and close and personal. Will that work? Mm. Mm. It's on top of a martini glass. Ooh, excuse me. Let's put this over here. We'll deal with that later. A little bit, a little bit. A little bit. There we go. That feels a little bit better. Sorry for the little ride. I did tell you to buckle in. This is, we're still on this train and that weird smorg looking thing is, uh, there is something floating in my gin that's, I don't like that. Something floating in my gin. I'm gonna do some more. Do a better pour. I don't tend to care too much about things floating in my gin. But today, because I'm on a very special train ride to a very pretentious place, I'm going to be particular this time because I have a right to be particular. I paid for these tickets, goddammit! Now we're going to add a full ounce of our Madeira wine. That's about 30 milliliters for our folks across the pond. In general, this would be a... This is a 4 to 2 to 1 ratio for anybody out there who doesn't even work in either of those particular things. When I'm done with my particular wines, I have this inert bottle of gas that's supposed to preserve them. Whether it actually does anything is beyond me, but it makes me feel better. So I'm gonna do it. Next, we're gonna add a half an ounce of Granny Smith and Red Cabbage Vinegar Switchel. And that's about 15 milliliters, about half an ounce. 
It's a very dark color. It is not as pink as it once was. This is no longer the core of Smorg. The Smorg core, if you will. It is something a little bit differently. A little bit different entirely. Then we're going to give that a stir. I usually stir until the sides of this glass feel a little chilly. Because I tend to get very unfocused on things. I tend to... Let's see, when, I, when I'm streaming, it's like a focus state, you know? I get distracted. My little Aussie buddy says, you must get a Barossa Valley wine from South Australia. It's amazing. Ooh, because I'm a little indisposed right now, my little Aussie buddy, could you, could you do me a favor and type exclamation point suggest and type that exact thing? It will send me a Discord message so I quite literally can't forget about it. It will DM me. OMG, the other end is a fork? Uh, yeah, dude, it's a trident. Uh, I got this from Poseidon himself. Duh, obviously. Ooh, it's great. The only reason I think I like this is because I made this cocktail for myself literally last night and I was sipping it all night, so I think it's okay. Let's swap that out. We're gonna take a little strainer. I got a little julep strainer that we use for things like this. Give it a pour. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, my little Aussie buddy. I shan't forget. The message just came through. Great. All right. It took us a little while, and I appreciate everybody sitting around for the ride. This is our smart cocktail. Now, as I had mentioned before, I didn't quite get the, not really a garnish in this case. Um, it's more just kind of like a the, the setting of how I want this to look. It's not quite prepared yet, but what I would do is if you imagine pipe cleaners. I had the pipe cleaners. Let me go get the pipe cleaners again. I simply threw them over top of the bar. Here, they come back. Pipe cleaners. <laughs> if there wasn't something floating in my gin, there's certainly gonna be something floating in my martini glass. It's smorg! Look at it! It's got the it's got the little it's got the little goobity doos. That it's supposed to look like at least. It's kinda Halloween-y, kinda looks like a spider. It's cute. Pipe cleaner garnish? I am not putting the pipe cleaner into the water. I'm not or into the liquid. I'm just I'm just not gonna do that. All right, get out of here. No fuzz? No fuzz. So, sands on the garnish this time. That'll be okay. That would be okay. All right, let's pop ourselves back to this angle and see how this thing tastes. Now, contrary to what Smorg used to be, um, and it used to be quite terrifying, uh, it doesn't smell like vinegar. It smells actually quite nice. There's not too much of a smell in this, to be honest. The Madeira is not super prominent to me, but I've had to pick anything. It does smell like a little bit of that switchel in terms of those molassesy notes and a little bit of that Madeira wine, which honestly I can't quite place right now. I just know it smells like Madeira. If only they made pipe cleaner straws. I mean, I have, no, I don't have anything similar to that. I mean, what I could do is take one of my straws, put a pipe cleaner through it and then clean that pipe, so to speak. Uh, but then again, I think things would be kind of fuzzy and Smart does look a little fuzzy, so it might be on brand. It's, it's a cocktail, obviously. I'm drinking a literal monstrosity. By the way, did you know that smorg, smorg kind of sounds like smorgasbord? Smorgasbord, smorgs aboard, smorgs aboard your train. There's smorgs aboard on this train. Choo choo, cringe moment. But uh, that's where they think that it might be where the thing is, the reference is coming from. I really have no idea. So this cocktail is not as vinegar for it as it would have been previously if you were just using the vinegar. Honestly, on me, when you use vinegar in a cocktail, you'll tend to transform it a little bit, either into a shrub, into an oxymel or switchel or something else like that. I was doing that wrong to begin with, but this is a, we a means to improve upon our cocktail craft and mixological things. So what does it actually taste like? It's honestly, it's, it's a little odd. There is a piece of this that wants me to say that it tastes almost like molasses, but molasses to me is a lot more on the sweeter end, oddly enough, and it almost tastes a little bit burnt. This doesn't really taste strongly of the molasses. I'm actually getting that almost, I'm certainly getting the booziness from the gin, but those very, very flavored juniper components from the gin is melding with the switchel in a way that's really unexpected. The Madeira, like honestly, the Madeira is really, really difficult to taste in particular, but it tastes like Madeira in the back. It's really difficult to pick out the switchel component because the vinegar to it, the molasses to it, just kind of like melds with everything else. 
Um, and the gin, it just kind of adds a boozy component to it. Honestly, this might actually be better with vodka if the gin doesn't contribute it too much, but I didn't have a chance to try that. But I do like gin cocktails, so this is kind of up my alley. There's a bit of a vegetalness, there's a tartness, there's a bitterness, a very, very slight bitterness, but it's cool and it's relaxing. And I think overall, it's almost savory in a way. It's like a savory, almost tart, sweet martini. It's like, it's almost a little savory and sweet. There's almost, it's almost meaty in a way. It's weird. And I don't think my palate is yet prepared to dissect everything that's going on in here. The education continues, and I'm sure one day I will be able to describe this properly. And it might transform in the future at all too. But it's just very interesting. I was like, as I sat there last night, feeling satisfied, I was like, what's going on here? And I was just perplexed. I was perplexed until I got to the bottom of the glass and I was like, I don't really know what that was, but I think I'll make another one. And then I woke up this morning at 10 o'clock AM <laughs> and uh, an hour later, I made another one and I drank it. So that's all, that's all I have to say about that, it seems. So Annie's asking, what is Annie asking? Is it a pickle garnish for the vinegar and a tiny one on the toothpick instead of the olive? My brain thoughts do too much work, just place mail. I thought about the, uh, the red cabbage garnish. And the red cabbage might actually be a pretty good place here because so the, so the s'more character itself has a pink core and these black navy blue tendrils. So I really and they, they've got like yellow eyes. So I thought maybe like a like a, a lemon rind garnish, maybe something a little bit different. I don't have any of the pickled cabbages up here because I used it in a salad and it's all gone. So, but uh, excellent ideas, excellent ideas in here. We're all mixologists really at heart, and that's the best part about these things. So that's our s'more. Smorgs aboard. Smorgs aboard indeed. Let me do a little bit of cleanup over here before we proceed to the final cocktail of, I'd say the evening, but it's 11 o'clock in the morning. I do not usually do these things at 11 o'clock. For anybody who's new here, because we actually do have a lot of newcomers here. Thank you everybody for popping in, by the way. Uh, usually we do these bar streams Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and which is, if we start out at 10, and it's 11 o'clock right now, would be, nine hours from now, usually in my evening. That's when we usually do things. It's not on a very particular, uh, like, consistent schedule. We're usually playing games on Monday or games on Wednesday. When I have enough content to create enough cocktails for the stream that you see here, I'll announce it in the Discord of when that next stream will be, so we can all conglomerate together, critique and vibe and do stuff with these cocktails, rip them apart, bolster them up, really do anything uh, related to the cocktails, I mean. And then uh, we go back to other things. So I am in the realm of creating cocktails inspired by the video games that we play. Right now it's Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. I got other ideas. If anybody else has suggestions, please feel free to throw them out there. They don't have to be good ideas. They just have to be yours. And that's really all I have to ask for. But, uh, Lively Dawn says, what is your favorite gin? I have been make meaning to buy a bottle and I have been looking at Roku gin. Roku gin I haven't tried too much of. That is a Japanese gin, if I'm correct in saying, and I don't have many notes on that one. I, in particularly, really like Beef Eater gin. It was the first gin that I ever got my hands on. It's a bit dry, but it's clean. It's not as sweet as, let's see, the gin that I bought for this one is a Bankers Club gin. And although it's juniper, like, forward it's oddly sweet and it's a little like a, it's a little like chemical and i'm not a huge fan of it but it came in the big bottle and it was cheap and is great for a recipe that i was trying to workshop a little bit better uh but beef eater beef eater is a gin that i would recommend i think that's around the 30 dollar range but if you're looking for something that's more within budget bankers club it's not too bad if you just want to have like uh, stuff to make your uh negronis and martinis and stuff with so let's take uh coaster this one is a Catan coaster, and put this off to the side over here as we proceed, after a little bit of cleanup, to our final cocktail of the day, which happens to be the one inspired by another partner in the game, the partner being Bobbery, uh, a brown babam who's a seasoned uh, shipmate or captain or something. Put my Madeira away, back into its little hidey hole in the front of the bar with an X. <laughs> way. Lavadon says, I haven't seen that one before. I'll take a look. Absolutely. Suggest a holiday gift guide of tools, spirits, and other goodies to get people that are into mixology for next Christmas. I'll just give it to you right now. If I was the one who was giving you spirits, personally based off of my own tastes, I would get some, uh, this friend, this imaginative friend of yours, a bottle of whiskey, 
a bottle of gin, one special liqueur of your choice. My particular one would be Campari. It's relatively affordable. It'll last them a while. And then you can get a small bottle of sweet vermouth and you can get, honestly, that's probably all you would need for like a craft cocktail starter kit. From that, if you have your whiskey and your sweet vermouth, oh, and don't forget Angostura bitters. Add some Angostura bitters in there too. You have enough for like a Manhattan. Uh, simple syrup is very easy to make. You can make your own old fashions with that. You can even make old fashions with your gin too if you want a gin old fashioned. And you can also make a Negroni too. And if you get other type, if you get a different type of like, like liqueur that's not like Campari. You can do really much anything. And Negroni is basically just some sort of spirit, some sort of herbal, like bitterish liqueur. And then you add your vermouth on top of that. Uh, it's more or less a recipe. A Boulevardier, you swap out the gin with some whiskey, or it might be bourbon specifically. Some people are snobs about that. I'm not in particular. Um, and there's a, it's a simple three ingredient thing. That would be my suggestion. And then of course, if you want for your stirred cocktails, get a little glass. You don't really need to buy that. Just get some, get some ice. You can put it into a pint glass and stir it around. You can use a spoon. You don't need to buy anybody things like that. You could get a strainer for them if they're really particular about like ice chunks and stuff. But honestly, if you got big enough cubes, if you get a big ice cube maker, just use your finger to prevent it from going inside. Let me think what else is there. If you're using citrus, you can get a juicer. Don't really need a muddler. I don't think you need a muddler. Honestly, you don't even really need a shake. You you might want to invest in a small shaker, something something cheap like this thing, just because if you use, let's say, a pint glass, you might break the pint glass, and I have done that at least once. And if you want to preserve your pint glasses, I wouldn't shake in a pint glass that you care too much about because you'll break it at some point. So maybe a good shaker, a fine shaker. That's my suggestion. But anyways, that's just my suggestion. So. Look at that! A bitty! Where do I put the- I always keep losing this silly, silly party horn. Here's the kazoo. Mm -hmm. What's in the decanter? Oh, this is my infinity. This is the Bar with an X's Infinity Bourbon Bottle. Uh, it's not actually bourbon. There's whiskey and stuff in there. But the idea is when you take from the infinity bottle, you put more back into it, and it's just whatever you have. Speaking of which, the infinity bottle is low. I like rye whiskey. I didn't even notice that thing was not full. Cool. Thanks for a reminder of that. Wow. I don't know how I missed that. <coughs> Education! Let's move on to another cocktail. This next one is about our buddy Bobbery. He's a hot-headed bomb um, who lost his wife, I think, and lost the will to sail again. But sometime around chapter five, I think, of the game, he joins your party being begrudgingly pushed onto the boat with Flavio to eventually grab the crystal star from Cortez, AKA Bone Daddy. If you want to refer to him as such, he's dead. He doesn't really care. Um, and then bring it back home to Rogueport where the adventure winds up continuing and Bobbery joins your party. His abilities uh, allow you to explode enemies. You can reveal secret areas out there in the field by exploding walls. Or if he wants to get a little flary with it, he just quite literally explodes himself in front of an audience of up to 100 or 150 people and everybody loves it. I don't think the people in the real world would appreciate it the same way if somebody blew themselves up in front of the audience. Probably not. But smoke and mirrors and stuff, it's all just a part of the show. Bobbery, to me, reminds me of Keelhaul Key, where you eventually meet him, subsequently, I guess, kill him off, and then kind of bring him back to life. Keelhaul Key hosts a variety of different items. It's a very tropical place. It's a very island-esque thing. You kind of get stranded on a little for a while, and all you have access to is a little bit of coconuts from an island, and you can find some mangoes on the island as well. But how do we take Keelhaul Key and combine that with Bobbery? I thought of something a little... A little tiki-like. Uh, the basic recipe for this is a painkiller, but it's heavily, it's, it's, it's moderately modified to include mango puree and notes of peppercorn because Bobbery himself, peppercorn, pepper box, explosions, fuses. I want something a little bit spicy in there. And so it's kind of a peppercorny mango painkiller, if you will. Uh, and it's a modified painkiller. It doesn't use Puster's Rim. So we'll get right into that in just a second. My little Aussie buddy says, how does it taste? What's in the decanter? How does it taste specifically? I don't know. Somebody's gonna have to consumption so I can find out. What's a painkiller? A painkiller, my dear Annie. Uh, actually, I have the recipe. Let me just pop it over here. It's in one of my, now oh, get the book. It's cool to have physical copies of things. Where's my tea drinks book? Tea drinks, tea drinks, tea drinks. A painkiller at its base. There are a number of different consumption. Don't mind if I do. Let's put that into a glass with a little bit of 
I like my whiskey. Nah, I'm gonna do it like this. If you here's a little wh whiskey tasting tip. Put a little bit in there. Get your palate ready. Kinda tastes like apple. And then you can add just a teensy bit of water to that to open things up. I use finger water because I'm at my own bar. Oh, that is so sweet right now. That is very sweet right now. Wow. It's like a sweet, it's almost sweet apple. Sweet apple vanilla? A little bit of maple syrup in there? Cool. Cool! We're gonna have well. Painkiller. Painkiller's in this book somewhere. There are a number of different trade, I think trademarked or copyright copywritten cocktails out there, and the painkiller happens to be one of them. The painkiller is, I believe, owned by Pusser's Rum. Pusser's Rum is a navy rum that boasts its flavors of molasses and whatnot. This is Pusser's Rum, Navy Strength. They pride themselves on it. It's got a very forward molasses taste to it. It's very, very sweet, and it kind of tastes like that blackstrap molasses that I had, more so than other rums that I've had. A painkiller is usually made with two ounces or 59 milliliters of Pusser's Rum, four ounces or about 115 ounce milliliters of pineapple juice, an ounce each of cream of coconut and orange juice, which are both 30 milliliters a piece, in a ratio of two to four to one to one. That's how you make your painkiller. If you modify your painkiller with other things, you'll get this next cocktail, which we'll go through. Aussie Buddy says. Oh my God. <laughs> Eat it. Again, yummy, yummy, yummy indeed. That's a good one. It sounds weird. It's, it's really good. It's weird because the uh, you keep adding stuff to it, so it changes every time. That just happens to be what it tastes like right now. So let's make our Bobbery cocktail. Our painkiller, just like our Bobbery, is going to be shaken. So let's get ourselves a shaker tin. Just like this. I'm gonna add some ice to our big side. And I have to grab a number of ingredients from my refrigerator. So please give me a moment. First I'll grab my ice. And I'll grab my cubes. Do that first, because it's all nice and cool like that. There we go. Ice. Let's grab some other ingredients, shall we? I need to grab from my refrigerator. I need uh, garnish materials, which I'll share later. I need orange juice. I need pineapple juice. I need mango puree. I need cream of coconut. Um, more pineapple juice? Why do I have more pineapple juice? That's pretty cool. Ooh, 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 okay. I also need pink peppercorn syrup. And more garnish ingredients. Um, and I'm gonna grab some cherries while I'm down here. I need gemmerata syrup. I need oleosaccharin. Oh, God, there's so much shit in this fridge. All right, I have to push all these ingredients out of the way so I can actually <laughs> close my refrigerator. Oh, my goodness. One day I'm gonna have a big old studio space where I borrow my own, a real, oh, a real bar. Damn it, for Christmas I want a real bar. I want a real bar for Christmas. Where is that? Mango puree, let's put them in the front. Mango puree, pineapple juice, uh, garnish materials, we got little pineapple fronds, got some uh, cherries, I got cream of coconut, I got peppercorn syrup, put that on top of each other. It's great like that. Got some orange juice, uh, mint, and apparently more pineapple juice. This is orange juice. This is more additional pineapple juice. Mints will go off the side. Oh, goodness gracious. These sound so amazing. I keep checking out if my uh, American is awake or not. American? You have an American? I have an American too. I am my American. My American. That's also a show. That's a new show now. I wonder if you're referring to that. Okay. What do we do for a bobbery? This is, let me preface this by saying, this is a tiki cocktail. This is a very, this, these things can sometimes be a little intense, sometimes be a little um, full of themselves. There's a lot of ingredients in this, and you usually garnish these things up the wazoo as beautifully as you can, and I've got some ideas of how we're actually going to do that. So if you'll stick with me for a little bit, we'll get to it. Consumption, I'll do some water this time. Water's a good idea. I have other things I need to do today. And if you're really cool, you'll spill your consumption literally all over your body. Because it's just that kind of day. 
What other things? American, yes, they are my closest friend. That's so sweet. It's very sweet. I have, let's see. I have a, I have a Pennsylvanian who I'm pretty close with. <laughs> all right, let's start this thing off. First of all, we need is an ingredient I haven't even pulled out yet. We need Jamaican rum. In this case, I'm gonna use an Appleton Estate Jamaica rum signature, it seems. I'm gonna add two ounces to our shaker tin. But first, I need a new jigger. I'm going through all the good ones. I'm trying to get all these used today so I can put them in the refrigerator, refrigerator, the dishwasher. Let's go two full ounces or about 59 milliliters of Jamaican rum. Great. PA? Oh, so are they? Pa? They're Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania people. I, I'm a Pennsylvania person. I'm from the newest of Jersey's though, originally. Two ounces of pineapple juice, which I have some, I would call it fresh pineapple juice, but it's not really fresh anymore, but it has been sitting in my refrigerator. I gotta give these things a little bit of a shake because they tend to want to do things on their own. Um, so I got some pineapple juice. Uh, I'm gonna take from the one that's got less liquid in it, because I guess I'm a little more worried about that one. Let's do two full ounces, that 59 milliliters as well, of our pineapple juice. This is nice and frothy. It's been sitting in a refrigerator. For those who don't know, um, pineapple juice can ferment if left for too long. Sometimes that's a good thing. For me, it's a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing. Again, there's that gray area between what is really good and what is really bad. Honestly, I have no freaking clue. Next, we're gonna add a full ounce of mango puree. These are specifically Keelhaul mangoes. I went into the game, picked some mangoes from the trees, and decided to take them back out to create this cocktail out of. Obviously, obviously. These are straight from Keelhaul, Keelhaul Key. One full ounce of our mango puree. That was a big splash. A big, big splash of stuff. Pa's nice. Shake, 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 senora, shake it alcohol. Yeah, he's nice. Not much going on if you aren't in the city, though. They are from Philly. Ooh, really? The city cries in PGH. This mango juice needs to be used soon. And I'm glad I'm using it now. Next, we're gonna add a full ounce of cream of coconut. I was the idiot who decided to put the cream of coconut in this container that does not pour well. So I'm gonna make a mess uh, and that's okay. That's gonna be just fine. So we're gonna try our best to get just an ounce out of this. And if we spill, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine. Oh my God, it's so gushy. It's very gushy. Oh my goodness gracious, there must be a better way. I'm sacrificing a glass, here you go. Oh, it's so gushy. Okay, and now, oh my god! Single ounce, please. Oh, not on the pineapple syrup, Bobbery! I need a full ounce. I need it, I need it, I need it, I need it. Not the chunk, I don't want the, oh my god. Put the chunk in there. Mango, uh, cream of coconut has solids in it sometimes. Did I get a full ounce from it? I didn't even get a full ounce of it. This is disgusting. I love it. It tastes so good. It tastes so good though. Oh my, oh my god. Just an ounce, please. I always have trouble with coconut cream. Yep, yep, almost. Almost there. Almost there. It's dripping everywhere. All right, cool. The cream does what it wants to. That it does. Let's add a little bit in there because I'm gonna wind up losing some in the jigger anyways. It's disgusting. Moving to Panksatani Penxa sometime soon to save time for visiting Go Goobers, Go Gobbler's Knob. Oh my goodness. That sounds sensual. Awesome. That was so good. I almost moved to Pittsburgh, says Lily Don. Decided against it. Philadelphia is great. I both love and hate Philadelphia in a variety of different ways. Anyway, now that I've finished myself up, um, I'm gonna actually put this co cream of coconut into here. There we go. Oh, and as I'm cleaning up, I'll just let that go for a little while. It's gonna take a hot moment. Oh, it's kind of, it's it's coming out a little white, but it's also coming out a little orange. Should probably go see a doctor about that. It's not normal, but I'm not worried. I don't feel bad, so why go see a doctor about it? Makes no sense to me. Next, after the creaming, we're gonna add a single ounce of orange juice. Again, I'd say that this was freshly squeezed, but it was freshly squeezed on Wednesday. Full ounce, 30 milliliters, orange juice, just, just see, just see, just see. 
That's what everybody thinks of Philly. You love it and you hate it. Punxy Phil, Punxsacani Phil is the magic groundhog for, uh, what does you call it? They have a whole day. Oh, it's Groundhog Day. Duh. The Groundhog has Groundhog Day. That makes sense. After the orange juice, we're going to add a full ounce of our pink peppercorn syrup. Special ingredient. Where's my pink peppercorn? There's my pink peppercorn syrup. Pink peppercorn syrup is quite literally some pink peppercorns that were crushed in a mortar and pestle and then added to some simple syrup in a saucepan with a little more sugar and a little more water added to it and then just let it simmer for a while until it started turning funny colors. Uh, I left the peppercorns in there because as I shake this cocktail, I want the peppercorns not just to get to know the syrup, but I want it to get to know the mango. I want it to get to know the uh, orange juice. I want it to get to know every single part of the cocktail because Bobbery wouldn't be much of a pepper box babam if not for the fact that, you know, like there's gotta be pepper everywhere and like, like fuel and stuff. I don't even want to think about the, I guess the anatomy of a babam. I'm sure it's like 70% gunpowder. So we need a full ounce of this. It's gonna have a heaping ton of peppercorns in it and that is okay because we're gonna wind up double straining this out the other side. There might be a couple left over, but it's just fine. It's gonna be just fine. All right, pop that off. Let me put my ingredients off to the side so we're not in the way of anything, including the cream of coconut. I don't need this anymore. I'll put this in here. There we go. And uh, I'm gonna get my little dough over here. Ooh, true. Philly's got some character and so much more connected to the rest of the East Coast. Pittsburgh is as glorified Midwest. True. It's a lot of walking in Imichab. You don't know how to navigate, but NJ Transit's pretty good. 3 a.m. now in Australia. Goodness gracious, you're still up. Congratulations. I definitely don't miss going to the college in Philly, though. That was always, that was, that bus was always late. Now, I honestly started walking because the buses sucked. All right. We have everything. Everything is in the cocktail, the cocktail shaker now. This ice has had a moment to get familiar with the glass, so we're gonna pour out any water that's built up over time. Let's combine liquids into solids. Give it a spank, smack, a punch, really whatever you wanna do with it. It's a, it's a cocktail, you do what you wanna do with it. We'll get our glass ready too. We will subsequently, ooh, I had almost forgotten. Before we wind up shaking that, we need to add some crushed ice. We need crushed ice. So we're gonna crush ice first and then we'll get to it. When we crush ice here at the bar with an X, we take a Lewis bag like this. We take a couple of pieces of ice. I have these ice balls that very conveniently come out of their container and make pretty good input for my ice bag. Sometimes when it wants to be agreeable. Ugh, that sound effect does, probably does not sound good on the microphone. I apologize for that wacky sounding. Pop it in there. And honestly, the last time I did this, I didn't get enough. So I'm gonna add another cube in there too. Oh. And if I were a professional bartender, I would have done this all in the beginning too, but then like it wouldn't have been, you know, it wouldn't have been as, as good, I don't think. We crush things at the bar with an X with safety in, in mind. First we put on safety glasses. Well, first we put the ice in the bag, then we put on safety glasses, then we grab this wrench that we found off the street and we just, we quite literally just whack it until it's crushed. That's, that's how you crush ice. Um, safety first, wear glasses. And please watch your fingers. There we go. When you're done, put your weapon of mass destruction away, take off your goggles, be proud of yourself, and thank your past self for what you've given yourself today. It's a ship steering wheel, the garnish. It's a ship steering wheel, the garnish. Oh, you noticed. Oh, I broke it. It's a piece of this. Oh, I knocked off one of the thingies. That's okay, I can just print another one. It's okay, you won't see part of it anyways. That's what I get. It's 11.30 in PA, so your friend should hopefully wake up soon. Oh, you're right, the American is waking up soon. So we're gonna take our crust ice, put it into our glass. This is a deep glass, so that's why I needed some more ice. Oh, that was perfect. I'm glad I added the extra ice cube in there. Done with that, don't need that anymore. So now, let's give this a shake, and then we get to play this little game called, we play the game called Shake, then we move on to the next level, which is Garnish. And then we drink, because that's the reward at the end of every dungeon. Ooh. 
you're giving me a little bit of a hard time, aren't you? There's a lot of liquid in here. Lots and lots of liquid in here, and it's actually not staying very sealed. Gotta hold it tight. All right, that's, yeah, you've messed up on me, so. I'll do the, the tentative shape. Okay, satisfied now. So now what we'll do, bring the cocktail angle over. And see what's going on. Crushed ice, crushed ice, ice that's been crushed. Crushed, dude, like the orange soda did. Let me move this martini off to the side. The smorg, smortini. Take a look and see how this thing goes. Actually, gonna get a top angle on this one. Hello there. Oh, you're gonna move over here in a hot moment. So, hello there. Hello, lovely. You are a very gushy shaker. Ooh. Almost forgot some of the liquid. There we go. Very nice. Now let's get strainer number one. Put that over top. Um, strainer number two. And put that on the receiving end. And we'll pour. Taking a little bit. There's a lot of liquids in here. Slowly but surely. Probably not a fine mess strainer. There's a little bit of stuff getting in there anyways. You know what? I want more liquid. Oh, that's so much peppercorn in there. Let me just grab another strainer. So apparently you need to get one strainer prepared and then you do the next one. Oh, and there's a lot in there. Wow. There's a lot more liquid than I thought there would be. It's because there's so much ice in there. Look at that little bubble. Look at it go. Now that is a full cocktail. My goodness gracious. Well, that just means that there's some more for later. Alrighty then, I'll take that. Now let's garnish. We're gonna take our little wheel, pop this on the inside as the first part of our garnish. Have that as a little garnish. This was 3D printed. Is it specifically food safe? Let's just say yes. Then what we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab a little umbrella. Bobbery's got a brown color to them. So I'm gonna grab an orange umbrella because it's the closest one that I got. We're gonna give that a little pop. A little pop. Push the other rubber band up. I'm gonna grab a cherry from my maraschino cherry jar. This is alcoholic maraschino cherries in um. What do you call this thing? Moonshine, gift from a friend. Thank you from friend. I'm gonna add two maraschino cherries to this actually. Two please. There's one. There's two, I'm gonna go with, oh, I lost one. Two, I'm gonna go with three. I'm feeling fancy. There we go. Just inch that on a little bit. Here we go. Put that away. Hey, oh, peppercorn adds some cool red color to that. It does, just a little bit. We're gonna add this in here. Just to the side. Oh, you know what? One of those cherries is actually causing a little bit of trouble. Add a little umbrella on it. Now, I got some mint leaves. And I got one other thing too. I had some pineapple fronds from the pineapple that was fresh a couple days ago. We add some fronds. See if we can snake one in here. See in the back. Do one over here. I'm gonna try to see if I can put these through each little tuft, each little opening on our bobbery. There we go, it's another one. I probably should have done the fronds first. Let me do another one. Can I get another one in there? I kind of have to snap it a little bit. Nah, I need a smaller one. Getting a little tough in here. There we go. There we go, there we go, there we go. One more thing. One more thing. This is fancy. Hindsight says to decorate the, y the wheel before you plug anything. Absolutely, this is all a learning experience. Now let's get some mint. Now we'll get some mint. This one, this mint also used to be fresh on Wednesday. I'm gonna take some of these weird pieces and just kinda, I'll have to 
do something with them later. That's really unfortunate. A lot of the, a lot of them has really browned. There's tricks to preserving mint. I I just don't know what those are at the top of my head. That's really unfortunate. But of the mint that we have left, it's still a little really disappointing thing of mint. But it's what we got, so that's what we're using. Let's kind of snake those. I don't need all of it. We'll take off the little bottom sprouts. Just kind of add a little tuft in the middle. I got one little little guy. Nah, that's fine. This dude. This dude right here. Hello there. Put all the other stuff off to the side. And of course, would not be complete without something to drink it from because there's a lot of ice in here. We need a big old straw. Let's pop that between one of these fronds. Right in there. And this is our bobbery. There we go. I'm gonna put this up a little bit so we can actually see the full beauty of the cocktail itself. There we go. Look at that. Like a tropical snowman. Oh, well, okay, okay, I sleep now. It's far too late now. You know what, little Aussie buddy? Thank you very much for popping in while you did. We appreciate you greatly. Get some good rest out there. Have a wonderful evening. Good night. It's easily a 15 to $20 cocktail, not including tip, if not more. Thank you so much. This is the Bobbery. There's a little bit of red color in there. Honestly, this looks beautiful. I'm gonna take a quick moment to be proud of myself and take a picture of this. Let me take a little, little pop this off from my angle so I can get a good view of it from the other side. Very cool. Very cool indeed. I'll put in the on topic section of the Discord what it looks like from my angle. I'm very proud of this thing. Oh, that's not the right one. Here we go. Oh, you already took a picture of it. Well, here's another one. Here's some more. Go for it. Let's pop things to the other side. Let's talk about it. What received. Indeed. <laughs> Excuse me. So again, our Bobbery cocktail was inspired by our little pepper box captain buddy. Uh, it's a bit spicy. It's tropical. It's got notes of mango in it. It smells like mint. And a little bit of cherry, because that's what we have in it. Let's give it a sip. Oh, without putting the pineapple fronds in our mouth, that straw placement was not very, not very good. Mmm. Mmm, my god, it's so good. Oh my god. When I mixed this the first time, I was very, very happy to find that instead of being super forward on those molasses notes, if we were to have used a Pusser's like an original painkiller is, it's a lot more fruity. It's a lot more tropical. It almost, there's no banana in this, but that honestly funkened mango now almost kind of tastes like a banana to it. Oddly enough, mango goes well with spicy things, things that are spicy. I'm sure you've heard of spicy, hab like habanero mango before. I think they have wings at like Buffalo Wild Wings that uses this particular combination of flavors. But the peppercorn adds a very, very slight, very slight spiciness to this. It's not really detectable on the first sip, but as it sits in your mouth and cools down a little bit, those peppercorns kind of brighten things up a little bit as the drink evolves over time. Right off the bat, it's got a hint of mango to it, it's got a hint of coconut to it. You can taste that pineapple just kind of supporting things a little bit. The orange juice is a little lost on me and it's been sitting for a hot minute, so I'm not as surprised that there, that sort of juicy dilution from the orange juice is like not really noticeable right now, but everything else is just super duper well together. And on the nose too, like I had not drank, I, I haven't drank this yet with the mint in it and the aroma component as you go in for the sip, take one, and then breathe out is nicely dynamic. Honestly, <laughs> whoa, I'm gonna try to shake, I'm gonna just, uh, mix this around a little bit because it's almost a little too sweet for me right now. Could use a little more, might actually be, use a little more rum. There's those rummy components. Mix it around, look, you might wanna mix it around a little bit. Maybe it's crush ice, pour in, Give a stir, wheel, decorate wheel, put straw and everything on top of it. And that's how I would do it in the future. And there is this, this appearance to it of some of the peppercorns. They're kind of on the side of the glass. No, some of them are in the glass. 
if you do get any of those peppercorns in your mouth, you'll notice. All the big pieces of the peppercorn are out. This is only the flakes of the skin of the peppercorn. The peppercorn actually comes from a pepperberry. If you take the pepperberry and you dry it, it becomes a peppercorn. The stuff on the inside is the corn. The stuff on the outside, kind of like the shell, call it the pepper sheath, if you will. And there's spiciness in all parts of it. If you grind it up real fine, there's a couple of smaller pieces in there. Those are the more like darker brown and black specks. Um, but the red stuff is all the skin of the pepperberry, which also does have a little bit of spice to it. It's very tasty. It's very, very tasty indeed. Ugh, and I keep wanting to sip one of the pineapple fronds. Kind of reminds me of SpongeBob. The perfect shade of yellow. It does have a shade of yellow to it that's reminding of our spongy friend, don't we? Yeah, it does. I don't know. Somebody convince me to, if somebody can convince me to do like TV show cocktails, we could probably do that. I actually got a book over the, the holiday season um, called Cocktail Chemistry from the guy who does cocktail chemistry, Nick Fisher. And he has a bunch of things inspired by TV shows and stuff. That's not really my realm. You can check out How to Drink or Cocktail Chemistry. Um, they do movie drinks, they do TV and movie show drinks. I'd recommend them, they're, they're fun watches. And then the other guy, Educated Barfly, he's cool too. I like that guy. But that's all, that's all we have. That's all we have for today. Finally, I was able to get through these things. I actually did figure out what was happening um, with the stream the other day. And I have a drive that I back up all of my recordings to, and it's a drive that's attached to my computer via USB. It was getting kind of full, and USB is just not a very good connection for really high intense recordings like what we do here. We're str I think we're recording in 2K and streaming at a little bit lower than that because Twitch is stupid like that. Um, so as soon as I swapped the drives, everything was okay. Uh, but it was stressful nonetheless. So I want to apologize again for those technical difficulties. We've gotten past it and we're better streamers because of it. And I think at the end of the day, that's a very good thing. I appreciate the suggestion there, Annie. Okay. So where have we been today, right? We've been in the, it's not the Mushroom Kingdom. I don't really know where we are. We've been at Rogueport and stuff. Let me do a little bit of cleanup and I'll go through a little summary of what we've done so far and where we are going next. so much stuff in this refrigerator. This is a very packed full refrigerator. I want to know what else to do with this pup, uh, peppercorn syrup. Anything with fruit in it, that'll be nice. Uh, this juice is, there's a little bit left of it. Let me put that over here and remember to use it. The pineapple juice will be okay for a little while. Oh. Oh. Oh, got it. What else am I missing? I am not. That was all of it. Great. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Ugh, the fronds. The cherries. Where's the mint? Oh, the mint I tossed because it looks terrible. Ooh. Okay. Here we go. Uh, fronds. Go over here. There we go. Put away. Close the refrigerator. Yes, the refrigerator closes. Excellent. All right, cool. We did it! We did it, we did it, we did it. Annie says, I gotta go get ready for a D&D &D game. Hope you have a good new year. If I don't see you before then, Annie, thank you very much for popping in. I hope you have a wonderful adventure. Wonderful Dungeons and Dragons experience. I know we've... I know what you're capable of. So let's see. Where have we been so far today? We've been, we've been playing Paper Mario. Been playing Paper Mario on the Thousand Year Door. There's a remake coming out, and I thought the best way to celebrate the remake um, which really well embodies a modern interpretation of an aspect of my childhood that I look back very, very fondly of. We figured make some cocktails from it. So, so far in our Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door series of curated craft cocktails, we've created eight of them so far. On a previous stream, we created the Paper Mario, we created the Dupless, we created Madame Flurry, and we created, I'm trying to remember what it was, the black chest inspired by the curses that you get throughout the game. This episode, we covered four more new cocktails inspired by what I will show you in a brief moment. We'll do things in order from what we did in the beginning to what we did at the end. Pop things over here and see where we did. Cool. 
So the first cocktail that we covered this evening, or this morning, it's the morning, it's a Saturday morning, there's still so much more left with the day, was the Hooktail cocktail. Our girl Hooktail, who lives in the High Castle, is afraid and fears the sound of crickets. Crickets are in the same family as grasshoppers, so it felt appropriate to do a grasshopper riff, which is usually heavy cream, creme de menthe, and creme de caco, and add a bit of cinnamony, fiery dragon components to it. We've modified the grasshopper recipe to include some cinnamon whiskey and some Angostura bitters, as well as garnishing the top with what seems to be remaining a little stencil of our uh, fanciful queen or princess dragon, uh, one of three siblings, by the way. Uh, it's got a nice cinnamony component to it, but it's very, very light. I, adjust the gr I adjusted the grasshopper ratios to be a little more forward on the cocoa and cinnamon, more so on the mint, because usually the mint is um, it's a little intense for me and the people I surround myself with. So this is our little cinnamon riff on the grasshopper for our hooktail cocktail. Next, we went into the Tasty Tonic. The Tasty Tonic is a game, uh, is a item that appears in the Paper Mario game and the Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door game. You can mostly just kind of buy it in the Thousand Year Door game, but you can create it in the original. In the original game, you could create it by using combinations of ingredients that include lemon, lime, apple, coconut, ah, bubbleberry, red berry, blueberry, yellow berry, and honey syrup. So what we decided to do was take some gin and combine all of those components, except for the honey syrup and except for the bubbleberry, which included some lemons, some limes, uh, red delicious apple, we had coconut flakes, uh, red berry was a strawberry, blueberry was a blueberry, yellow berry was a star fruit. Let that sit for a while to create this fruit infused gin over here, which we then combined with some bubblegum vodka for the bubbleberry, uh, some honey syrup, as well as some tonic water to top the whole thing off. It is a very gin, it is a very fruit forward gin and tonic that is very, very sweet and is most prominently characterized by its notes of honey and fruit, as well as the bitterness from the tonic water. As it sits, those more fruity or bitter components uh, accentuate a little bit more as the temperature of the drink comes up to the actual room temperature. Um, but depending on what tonic you water you use, it's actually not too bad. This Fever Tree tonic that I use is actually not as bitter as some other tonic waters are. So I think that this is a good sipper throughout the day. The Hooktail cocktail you should probably drink a little quickly because the cream tends to condense a little bit and uh, get a little get a little thick. So drink it quickly. I did not, um, but I. That would be my recommendation. After Hooktail, and following the Tasty Tonic, we moved on to the boss Smorg. Smorg is a creature that you find at the end of like chapter six after you're uh, almost at the end of the chapter after the train ride. And it's just kind of like this weird, weird creature that pops up on the train. And so long story short, I went from a martini riff to a Gibson riff to a little off in the distance of Martini and Vermouth land to create something that combines Madeira, which is a type of fortified wine, with some gin, a London dry gin, more forward on the juniper flavors, as well as with some homemade red cabbage, Granny Smith vinegar switchel, which adds a bit of molasses to it. There's a molasses component to it, there's a Granny Smith apple component to it, and it kind of tastes like vinegar, but all things considered, all together, there's a very weird cocktail that I, it's it's kind of hard to describe the taste of it, but it's a little savory, it's a little tart, it's a little sweet, it's kind of earthy, kind of vegetal, but all in all, quite the sipper. And as it continues to exist, I was sipping this all throughout last night, and it didn't get worse. It does get a little more bitter over time, but I kind of like bitter things. And right now, it's been about, what, I think a half hour since it's been sitting out like this. It's a little more forward on those kind of bitter, little bit of vinegar, uh, but those Madeira, I really taste the Madeira now. And I can't quite describe the Madeira flavor. That was almost like maple syrupy to me previously. And a little, it's a little metallic too from that blackstrap molasses that's added in there. But it's weird, but it's a martini. Sort of, kind of. It's got the it's got the vermouthy wine stuff in there, so it tastes pretty good. It's complex. And then we finally landed upon Bobbery. Bobbery is a partner that you experience around, I think, chapter five or so. In Keel Hall Key, he is uh, like the main partner that you get around that time. So inspired by the tropical locale of Keel Hall Key, where you can find mangoes and coconuts, among other things, we modified the Painkiller Cocktail, which usually uses Pusser's Rum, Pineapple Juice, orange juice and cream of coconut, and changes it up a little bit to instead use, instead of Pusser's rum, which is a bit more molasses forward, some just Jamaican rum, Appleton Estate, a lot more on those fruitier components, more so than those molasses-y components. Combine it with pineapple juice, mango puree, from Keel Hall, obviously, with cream of coconut, orange juice, and pink peppercorn syrup, because our dude's a bob -omb. 
He's literally, he's got an explosive personality. So that to me, I think of explosions, I think of gunpowder, I think of pepper boxes, I think of peppercorn. So we added some peppercorn syrup, which really livens the drink up with a bit of a spicy component that doesn't hit you in the front, but it sits with you as you sip the cocktail and you proceed either on with the rest of your nights or the rest of the drink as you continue to make your way down. It actually, uh, the recipe that I have is a little too much for this particular glass, but just to know, you'll make about one and a half drinks from the recipe that I will post later in the description of the VOD video that comes out after this, as well as on the vlog uh, on www.camerawithanx.com. It's spelled just like my username. Um, uh, later on. I'm very behind on that, so it doesn't have all the recipes up there so far, but if you're watching this post the post, um, everything can be found up there. Um, and that's where I'll, that's, that's where I'll leave it. That's all I got for y'all. This was, this was really fun. I was preparing a lot for these ones in particular, and it was a fun thing to do before the end of the year. In addition to what we were doing before the end of the year, we've been collecting donations, uh, pretty much all during the month of December. And in total, as of right now, because we're going to end the campaign at the end of the year, we've raised $515.69 for the World Central Kitchen, which is great. We had one donation during stream from Lively Dawn Shadow, and when we accept donations here with the, with the, the, with the next Studios, we uh, wind up popping the balloons at the end. Uh, we got one turn in the stream, so thank you for that. Let's pop this. Incoming loud sound warning. I'll do it away from the microphone. Thank you for your donation. Oh, I missed it. There we go. Big loud noises. Big loud noises. My ears are ringing a little bit, but I do it in the corner, but it's okay. It's all for, it's all for a good cause. So that was great. Yay, indeed. So that's all I've got for you this evening. We had the hooktail cocktail, the tasty tonic cocktail, the s'more cocktail, and the bobbery cocktail. There is one more stream that I anticipate on doing for cocktails, and it will be after I have completed my playthrough of Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door, which we've been going on Twitch and YouTube. Um, at the end of the game, I was planning on beating the final boss, doing the Pit of 100 Trials, and a bunch of other things. I have a collection of crystal stars that I've been creating as garnishes to inspire seven to eight more cocktails that we will do at the very, very end of the series. There will be one cocktail for each of the crystal stars, including one for everything overall. I don't know if it's going to be the map or the Shadow Queen or something else, but each one, every single ability is going to get a, a cocktail in, uh, interpretation, but all the way from Sweet, uh, was it? Uh, sweet treat all the way to supernova. Uh, I, I, I'm like halfway through figuring out the recipes for that, but at some point in the future, we'll do one more cocktail stream. It'll be cocktail stream for Paper Mario number three. It'll be a big one. It'll end out our Thousand Year Door series. That'll be fun. Uh, I don't know when that's going to be yet because not everything is completed, but if you are interested in attending that later on, either pop a sub on the YouTube and you'll be notified eventually. Uh, you can drop a follow on the Twitch and you will be notified eventually. But if you really want to know what's going on, if you go into the Discord, I will put out a notification to our notification squad about when that stream is going to be in case you want to be a part of the live audience when it actually happens. So I'll give you, I'll give you a heads up, at least a week or two in advance, just like I did for this one. It was kind of... You know, it, it eventually wound up happening. MHI says, you could contact Nintendo, see if they let you write the official cocktail book. <laughs> I don't think that would happen. Um, well, if anybody's dad works at Nintendo, though, wink, I am here. I like cocktail mixologies, and I'm a total geek and nerd, so I open up to that. But that's not all I've got for this. Uh, not an evening. It's the morning. And it doesn't matter where you are. The party, the party continues at another time. That's all I got. Thank you, everybody. We finally did it. We finally did it. We're at the end. Oh, goodness. Took a couple. Took a little hot minute for these ones, but we managed to get to it. So thank you, everybody, so much for sticking around here to the bitter end. The bitterest end being the Tasty Tonic. It's gotten a little bit bitter at this point. But overall, it was kind of a sweet experience, if you ask me. So um, happy new year to everybody. I will not be streaming on Monday on the new year because we're doing other things. We're celebrating and trying to take a restorative rest. But I'll be back on the airwaves uh, next Wednesday, the 3rd for some more Paper Mario on the Thousand Year Door. Join us on this journey as we continue toward the end. We will work our way to the final reward, which will be all of these Crystal Star cocktails. And I hope they hit well. If any of you actually try these cocktails on your own or make on your own riffs, I'd be happy to hear about it or really whatever you're interested in. Like it's, it's cool to be able to celebrate what other people are really, really interested in. My thing is cocktail mixology and technology. What's yours? Let me know if you want to. But other than that, the only thing you got to do is just sit there, back and relax, and chill out. So thank you all so much for joining me on this journey, this beautiful Saturday morning. 
I'll see you Wednesday. Good morning to y'all. If the sun is out, just like it is for me, if the moon is out where you are and you are sleeping now or attempting to, have a good rest of your evening. Whether it's dawn, twilight, or otherwise, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, may you have a wonderful one wherever you are. To everybody, thanks again. And until next time, y'all, bye.